Chris, how much does the team need the break? Oh, we, I mean, we don't need a break, but it's good that we've qualified to have a break. Um, it's been a long season, but at the same time, we're playing some pretty good footy at the moment. So there's a there's a balance to it all. But I think most importantly, it's great that we've qualified in the way that we have. So what's the agenda for this week? Uh, well, recovery today, um, and then we'll get into um, <clears throat> the guys having a little bit of a break uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then um, back to training later in the week. So I uh, wanted to give the guys a chance to, uh, when, when we get out of the isolation phase, to, um, to have a couple of days to themselves and then get back into training later in the week with, you know, a, a week and a couple of days before our uh, preliminary final. So let's do an injury update with Razia Fantasia right now. Um, well, Raz, you know, we're, we're confident he's going to play. Um, we, we won't bother with scans in the short term. Um, you know, we'll rest over the next, as I say, two or three days. Had a bit of work done yesterday here at the club. Um, and we expect him to be available. And Mitch Georgiades, what's his program from here? Yeah, so Mitch will, Mitch will do some training today um, and with a view basically to um, to being ready to go at SNFL level this weekend um, if the guys ended up choosing to do so. Anyone else needing to be checked? No, at the moment, I, th I think the, uh, the group is pretty healthy. So uh, outside of those two, you know, everyone has reported back in today uh, feeling feeling fine and you know, ready, as I say, to have a couple of days rest and then to ramp training up towards the end of the week. The removal of pre-finals by work for you, do you feel it's a better way to go this way, just to go round 23, roll into finals straight away? Yeah, it, worked, it worked pretty well for us. So, you know, I my personal view is that um, that rewarding the the top teams is important, and, and therefore rolling into finals is a is a good thing. But I'm not going to go to war over it. I think it's been a good thing for us for this year. It might not be good for us down the track, depending on where we end up. But um, I think right now we're, we're pretty comfortable. There was a fair bit of uh, noise about the umpiring on Friday night. Do you take that up with headquarters this week? Oh, we, we discuss the umpiring trends every week, really, with the umps. So, um, look, I'm, I'm not a massive one to get involved with umpiring other than to say that, you know, these things work in your favour sometimes and, and against you other times. You know, I'm, I'm sure that there's a view from the pure numbers on the weekend that we might have got a rough deal. I'm not sure that that's the case, but... Um, We'll, we'll keep in contact with the umpires to remain abreast of anything that they're seeing that is happening across the competition. You finished up with the Saturday night preliminary final. Does that not matter anymore which one, whether you're Friday or Saturday, because of the week's break you'll have after it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if if we're good enough to to win that game, then looking like you know there'll be a couple of weeks before the grand final. So. Uh, I think in in that sort of period of time, it's less important whether you play on the Friday night or Saturday night. Um, obviously, our challenge before we worry about how long we're having as a break after it is to actually get the job done in the game. You haven't had a unchanged team for a long time. You've had long selection meetings. Do you, since this one's getting easier to work out what your preliminary final side is, regardless of the opponent. I don't think it's getting easier. I think what we've had this year so far is, um, you know, we've had a challenging year in regard to selection because, you know, we have had players out at various points in time. So, um, yeah, I think we're getting closer to feeling like we know what our best 22 is, but or 23, but ultimately that will be shaped as well by our opponent and you know, how our players are, are feeling. But if there's any doubt that, um, you know, the coaches have got options, which is probably more important than knowing your best group is that 
you know you've actually got options depending on, you know, as I say, who your op, op, uh, opponent is or um, whether you've got injuries or any other concerns. That's significantly different, isn't it, than all the West Bulldogs on a lineup? Sorry, I didn't quite get that, Bruce. Sorry. How significantly different would it be your lineup if it's Brisbane or the Western Bulldogs? Where did the changes come with the opponent? Well, I think the the first change that we've, that, well, sorry, the first question that the coaches would be asking would be about, um, you know, the the taller forward line and whether there's room for to come back into the team now. You know the. The situation was taken out of their hands on the weekend, but that's not to say that that's off of the table. Um, so that that would be the most obvious um, point in case. But you know, there'd be other positions in the team that the coaches are looking at at the moment. And importantly, we've we've got some selection pressure as well, which is, uh, as I say, vital at this time of the year. Who wants to go next? CD, do you reckon that was your best performance of the year? It was if you had to find a flaw across the board, you probably couldn't find one. Well, certainly the most important performance of the year. You know, there's no doubt that you know, we felt like we've played well at various points throughout the year. But you know, you'd be silly to to suggest that leaving you know, your first final playing the way that we did against a team that you know most people I think would have suggested we're going to get the job done against us is not a good outcome for us. So, um, you know, I thought we played really well. I thought that um, the, the group has come together over a period of time as exactly, you know, what myself and Ken and others had been saying and probably less people believed. So we keep on comparing this year to last year. Are you in a better spot this year, do you think? I think we've had more challenges thrown at us throughout the minor round this year, which would suggest that we should be better placed. You know, ultimately, time will tell, you know, um, this whole concept of whether we are or we aren't. As I say, I just think we're, we're better prepared now. We've had more challenges through the minor rounds. You know, last year, we spent a lot of the year trying to just win every week in order to win every week. But this year, I think, Full credit to the coaches and the players. They've they've been um, increasingly focused on playing the right way and doing the right things towards the end of the year. Which you know, hopefully, you know, we all saw the fruits of that on the weekend, where we felt like we've been building to a better performance over a period of time. CD, uh, what do you make of Sam Power Pepper on Friday night and the way that he came off the bench and had an impact? Yeah, Sam was great. He obviously the the game, you know, was was set up for him in many respects. You know, a guy who's a really powerful footballer to come in late in the game and and make a difference or use his power um, in various phases of the game. I, I thought that uh, that he did really well. You know, I thought that again the coaches have managed him well over a period of time. You know, he, he fell out of the the starting 22, but the coaches wanted him to go back and get his hands on the footy at SNFL level, you know, with a view to him um, potentially playing the role that he did on the weekend. So, you know, whether that changes or not in the future, he certainly you know, did his chances of playing no harm by what he did when he came on. So, again, he's another one of those pieces of, uh, um, you know, our current scenario where you see, you know, a guy pushing for selection. I was going to say, with everyone healthy and fit and, and there may be or maybe not being a spot for him, is there a spot, you guys haven't really had one all year, like a designated Medi sub, is there a spot for someone with that power, as you mentioned, as a, well, you know, we can't get him in the best 22, but he just fits a Medi sub role really perfectly for, for what you hope is two more weeks? Yeah, I th think that that will be part of the discussion. Um and we, we put some thought into who's in that role all the way through the year to suggest that we're only just thinking about it now would be uh, underestimating the power of thought of our coaching group. So, um, you know, who we select into the future, I guess time will tell, but the guys put some thought into every spot, not just the 22 who actually play. Because ultimately the person who is the sub needs to be able to 
come on and play a role from minute one if that's the case, but but also have the capability to influence the game late if need be. Uh, one more for me. You talked about the, the buy after the prelim before. Is it your understanding in your role at the football club, but also on the on the uh, what's it called the committee that you're on? Is it is it your understanding that that will be put in place? Yes. Yep. I think I've been saying for a while that the uh, grand final would be played on the 25th, isn't it? So. Assuming that uh, the AFL have um, announced that our prelim is on the 11th, my powers of deduction would suggest that there's going to be a buy in between. Come on, I was just asking. Oh, mate, I'll answer the questions, no problem, Maxie, but uh, <laughs> is there no quality control on your end? I'm just here by myself, mate, flying the flag. No, I just thought I'd ask in case you had a different answer. No, Point proven. I, we've answered. On to what the um, oh. Hey, CD, how have you seen the game plan this year kind of change? It seemed, it seemed at least, you know, looking from afar that it was kind of against Yolanda, it was almost back to what the team was um, rolling out in 2020 to an extent. Yeah, well... Look, back, back to you know, the, whatever reference point you're using there, you know, we, we're not looking at being back to whatever year, whether it be 2020 or <clears throat> prior to that. You know, uh, the challenge is to be playing good footy right now that's going to win the competition in 2021. So from, from that perspective, you know, we're, we're keen to be playing a game style that suits our current playing group. Um, and that's going to be able to compete against the remaining teams in, in the competition. So, um, yeah, I think that there's no doubt that it's coming together. Um, but whether it's the same as last year, I think you'd, you'd see some probably significant differences to the way that we're going about it now compared to last year. I guess um, one of the big things that came out Friday night was the impact that on the players that you've brought from other clubs have, have had had in the win. I mean, that, that's almost the kind of same with Melbourne as, as well. I mean, why, how, how, I guess, tricky is it for, you know, to make it work when you bring in another player from another club and, yeah, you target those kind of players? Because, yeah, some clubs just don't do it. You know, they more just don't try and go out and, you know, poach players from other clubs. Well, I, I guess, firstly, let, let me start answering that by saying that we don't, get everyone right. So don't think just because we're in the position that we are that we think we're doing things exponentially better than others. We're just in a fortunate position right now where those guys are helping. But I mean, clearly, you know, Jason Cripps, our list manager, does a fantastic job in identifying the types of players that we actually want to get into the, to the club. Um, you know, our, our playing group do a great job in... Um, assimilating those guys into, you know, our, our playing group, our coaches work hard on on um, making sure that, you know, that they feel and get an understanding of the way that we want to play our footy. You know, I think our club does a great job in making sure that they're aware of the history that they're walking into. Um, it's something that we have over a whole heap of other clubs is, is you know, a great deal of history and, and people with um, a great deal of experience um, in success at our club. Um, and then you've got, you know, a supporter base who, you know, know exactly what they're seeing. They, um, they're strong with their views, you know, but they support us and have supported us really well over the, you know, my journey. So it's a whole of club thing. It's not just about you know, individuals coming in and, and playing well. It's about how you uh, get them to be a new player, to be part of your club. And I think we do a pretty good, or we've done a pretty good job of that. And finally, for me, um, do you, does the club get to have a say or we hope to have a say in what kind of crowd will be allowed for the prelim final? Uh, I think our, our only say will be to, to suggest that we want as many as we possibly can within... Um, what SA Health think is reasonable. 
yeah, we'll, we'll continue to push for that to, as I say, be as many people as, as uh, SA Health think is appropriate. Let's hope it's a heap.